So uh, I would like to spend this 10 minutes uh, and talk about the IoT, the very abused word, but I will give some context. We're gonna talk about uh, Wi-Fi enabled uh, IoT devices, and we're gonna talk about access control, uh, policy assignment and segmentation, right? So we're just getting to uh, the right context. Now, one thing I will promise you, this is the only slide you're gonna see, the rest of it is demo. Um, but before, before we start this, uh, why are we are we talking about it and why it has missed to do anything with it? So first of all is we have a challenge with, uh, you know, IoT devices. Uh, typically, most of the time they have, you know, they have very limited or no support for uh, that one X, right? They have no supplicants or even if they have a supplicant, it's so terrible you don't want to use it. The second challenge comes from uh, let's say BYOD workflows, completely different story where, you know, uh, employees can bring their personal devices or students can bring their, you know, personal devices to the dorms. And again, there is a lack of either that one X support on some of the devices or, you know, the complexity that's associated with the uh, onboarding solutions that are out there, right? Where you need to download an app just in order to get your certificate and Wi-Fi profile pushed to you. It, just becomes complex in some cases, right? So obvious alternative solution or sometimes the only solution is to use multiple pre-shared keys. And we've been doing this for, you know, since the beginning for many years, but now something has changed, right? So first of all, uh, we are trying to provide the necklace way of, uh, you know, onboarding these devices at cloud scale. Because everybody says that, you know, there's gonna be a million, trillion, whatever number of IoT devices by uh, every year we have to be ready for that scale. Therefore, architecture matters, right? So you are potentially looking at either, you know, a multiple thousands of hundreds, thousands of, of keys that you have to manage if you are going for the parent point or per user uh, pre-shared key. The other thing with, you know, we're solving is there is no overlay solution that you have to deploy. There is no external radius you need. There is no NAC, there is no captive portal or anything like that. The most important one is this uh, solution is Mac-less. It's Mac randomization agnostic. We're not using Mac address of the client as the identity, right? So we are looking at the PSK, or in this case, the PSK name as the identity that we are gonna track and as the identity that we're gonna use for policy uh, assignment and segmentation. So in this example here, what you can see is you could have a, let's say, device type identity. You can create a device type PSK for, let's say, you know, some kind of an appliance. Could be motion sensor. And you can say that the traffic from these motion sensors has to, you know, it has to tunnel to a missed edge in order to bypass, you, you know, your corporate network and then go out and exit to, say, AWS where the application service is, right? So you could assign a VLAN, a VLAN determines if the traffic is going to be locally bridged out of the switch or tunneled, and we can support both scenarios on the same SSID based on the key. Uh, and you could also assign a role to that pre-shared key where a role is actually tied to a policy in our WXLAN framework. So in this example, for example, here, you could see that BYOD users will have access to the internet, but they won't have access to any of the corporate resources. Because, you know, you're not supposed to uh, get on the internal uh, resources from an iPhone, right? The, the next uh, very important aspect of uh, what we uh, what we are announcing, what we're launching is the PSK lifecycle management, right? So when you're looking at uh, you know, 10,000 keys, 5,000 keys to manage. Uh, what do you do on day two? What do you do when you need to, you know, rotate these keys? How would you uh, go about that? Right? And with that, uh, I will actually switch to the demo. I'm going to show you our PSK manager UI. And uh, this is natively integrated into Miss Cloud. Uh, it's part of uh, every organization. So at the organization level, you're able to create pre-shared keys, import them in bulk, uh, programmatically create them. Uh, and you're looking at right now, around about 20,000 keys in my work. Right? So again, we're talking about scale. And 
what you're looking at is really the uh, type of identity storage right, when you're uh, when you're looking at the PSKs. So, for instance, uh, if I have a key for like Apple TVs, I can define which VLAN this key will land. Uh, I can define what's the expiration date for that key. So, when that key is gonna expire, thus will be invalid. I could define what is the role for. Uh, for that key, and I can also track the activity of of that given PSK. That's fine. That's that's okay. Now the question is, what you're going to do? Let's say six months later, right? Now you're at the point where somebody says you need to rotate the keys on your Samsung devices, right? So what I can do, I can just search for any key that has Samsung in it. So out of twenty thousand keys, I get three, right? They're expiring. Well not soon enough, but let's say I need to rotate these, these past phrases. So what I can do is say, you know, select them. So, so basically uh, I think what, what uh, you know, you're gonna go after is, is how do we life cycle these pre-shared keys, right? So uh, that's uh, a Correct. big piece of this. So uh, in this org, you, you have 20,000 keys, you're filtered down to the three keys and there you go. And now what, what we can do is say, okay, let's duplicate these keys, right? But I don't wanna uh, just you know, rotate the keys and then have people that are using these keys right now calling me and saying, you know, the, the end of the world has, has started. What I want is I wanna keep the original keys, but right? I want to mark them some, in some way, right? I was just gonna say, it's gonna be an old key, right? I'm gonna create new passphrases. We could do, do you know, random uh, strong password a generator just say how many characters you want in the in the passphrase and you know potentially changing let's say the expiration date on the new keys right so you could say expire them in six months from now so i'm going to duplicate it right so this will uh, create a uh, three new keys with the new passphrases that i'm going to you know notify you know whomever is using these keys and say okay now now it's time to rotate and i can now say you know I can see my old keys are still active, right? So if I, let's say, select uh, a specific key, I can still track if there are any recently active devices using that key, meaning that, okay, by the time I decide I'm gonna nuke this key and destroy it, is there gonna be somebody that's gonna complain or somebody didn't do his job and migrated their devices to a new key, right? So you could still see that. You could actually go at the org level, right? You could go and click on that, uh, client and, and get into the uh, insights of that particular user. Okay. Yeah, no, I think um, um, the, the purpose of this is key migration and key uh, sustenance is a, is, is a painful problem. The, the approach we've taken is you can keep your current keys, we'll show you who's using it, and then you know you introduce new keys, and then as you annihilate uh, um, the, the old users, you could uh, get onto the new one. 